Hello, welcome back to Plumbing College. Today I'm going to teach you three different ways to cut copper pipe. The most common type of copper pipe used in UK domestic households is British Standard EN1057 R250, which is half hard. We are going to focus on cutting the most common pipe diameters used in the UK in domestic situations. So 15 millimeter, 22 millimeter, and 28 millimeter. Copper pipe is measured on the outside diameter. So for example, 15 millimeter pipe, 22 millimeter copper pipe, and 28 millimeter pipe. In plumbing, when we measure pipe, we use millimetres. For example, let's measure and mark 300 millimetres in readiness to cut. The most commonest and easiest way to cut copper pipe is by using an automatic pipe cutter. This is also known by its registered trademark name, a pipe slice. You will need a different size automatic pipe cutter for each diameter pipe you cut. So for example, 28 millimeter pipe slice, 22 millimeter pipe slice, and a 15 millimeter pipe slice. We are going to cut the pipe on this line here. So what you do is the middle of the pipe slice is where the cutting wheel is. So we Push it in. So let me show you we're going from this trajectory. Push it in. Look at the arrow, that is the direction that you turn the pipe. When turning the pipe slice, keep the pipe still. After about four to seven turns, the pipe will cut. No further action is needed. This pipe is ready to be used in a fitting. The advantage of a pipe slice is you can cut the pipe in position in situ. So for example, if I wanted to cut this pipe here in place, I'll pop in the pipe slice and can turn it. I don't need to I don't need to remove the pipe work. Another advantage is you always get a straight cut using the pipe slice. Colleges like you to use an adjustable pipe cutter. The advantage of this is one tool can cut different diameter size pipes. Okay, so the cutting wheel is at the bottom. When we cut the pipe, we want this lined up with our mark, so we place it into the adjustable pipe cutter. Remember, the pipe should be not too tight, just loose in the tool. Make sure the pipe is sitting on two rollers and on the cutting wheel, like this. When the pipe is in the adjustable pipe cutter, it needs to be fairly loose, like this. So you can turn it with ease. Right, so to use this tool, what we do is we spin the pipe, we spin the tool around the pipe. So we hold the pipe and we spin the tool around it. We then turn the handle right, a quarter of a turn, and we then spin it again. And we do it again. The adjustable pipe cutter must always be loose. Never struggle to turn it around the pipe. If you're struggling, you're doing it too tight. Then eventually... When you cut the pipe with this tool, it leaves a burr in the pipe. This needs to be removed. So for example, the pipe on the left has no burrs, but the pipe on the right is the one we've just used and does have a burr. So let's remove it. It's at the end of the tool. We do it like this. OK. 
thing. Right, some mistakes students make is they put the pipe in the wrong part of the tool. So they don't put it on the three wheels, they put it here, which is completely wrong. So where it needs to go, just to recap, is it needs to go there, like that. Right, another mistake students make is they put this on the pipe so tight. Right, they just do it really, really tight. And it's really, really hard to turn as well. It's really hard to turn. I do it really tight. Really, really tight. And then what happens, as you can see, if you do it really tight, it leaves the pipe squashed, not looking round. Another consequence of over tightening is the adjustable pipe cutter could become completely stuck because you have squashed the pipe. If this happens, you would need to start again with a new piece of pipe. Over time, the cutting wheel will wear out and one of the signs is tracking marks or worming like this. This means that the cutting wheel needs to be replaced. The disadvantage of this tool is it's, you can't really cut in situ. Okay, so it's more for when the pipe is not installed. We can also cut pipe using a hacksaw, so junior hacksaw, normal hacksaw. If you put the pipe in a vise, make sure that you protect the pipe because what can happen is you can you can squash it and it'll be no good. Okay, so if you put the pipe in a vise, just put some tissue around it. And make sure that it's not, make sure it's not too tight, the pipe. All right, so we're gonna cut the pipe here, 300 mil. When using a hacksaw, the best blade is 32 teeth per inch. So that means that for every inch, which is there, there's 32 teeth within that inch. Okay, so that's best for cutting copper pipe. Okay, when cutting, always use the full length of the blade. Right, so. Never push too hard. Let the saw do the work. Right. When cutting pipe with a hacksaw, you get burrs on the inside and also on the outside. We need to remove these. You can either file it, right, so we need to remove the burrs on the inside. Using the round file. And we will also Need to remove the burrs on the outside using a flat file. You can also use a deburring tool, which is deburrs the inside. And this side, if you go to the outside. The advantages of using a hacksaw is you can cut the pipe in position, in situ. And of course, 
course, one hacksaw can cut any size pipe. Uh, to ream is to open the pipe out using this. So to ream. And to deburr is to remove all the, the bits from cutting. But generally, people say deburr and they mean to ream and remove all the bits from cutting. Whatever technique you decide to use to cut a copper pipe, it's very, very important that you remove the burrs and ream the pipe. If you don't, you'll get blockages, turbulence and noise. Now you know three different ways to cut copper pipe. It's your turn to have a go.